Hi, everyone. Welcome to Consciousness Unfiltered. I am Dr. Anthony Mattis, Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator, and I am joined by my guest, Julia Sodas, also Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator and Right Voice for You Facilitator. And my favorite credential is being your wife. And she's also my wife, but <laughs> I wanted this to be a very objective interview here, so <laughs> she just blew that one out the door. But uh, anyway, but we'll be, you know, sharing the tools of access consciousness. And, you know, Julia's uh, has come to a lot of um, revelations, awarenesses lately, as you do when, you know, when your target is to actually seek more consciousness and you know, a lot of it, it's always grand and glorious, but not necessarily always comfortable. And one of the things Julia would like to talk about today and share, and I asked her, I said, would you be willing to share some of the things you've gotten to over the last couple of months uh, is the, um, the five, what, steps to intimacy, right? And, and the, five elements. the five elements of intimacy. And uh, so the one that I like to talk about a lot um, is vulnerability. And, and that is most often a misunderstood um, attribute to have. Uh, you know, we're taught to protect yourself. We're taught to not be vulnerable. Otherwise, people will take advantage of you. People will walk all over you. But you ca- could you actually share with the world actually maybe a different point of view of the gift that vulnerability is? Yeah. um, Wow. Well, I mean, I think for me, it's like, you know, I have had this place where being, you know, looking at who I am has not been the easiest thing in the world because it's like, you know, most of us are raised, especially as girls, you know, to figure out how we are sugar and spice and everything nice. And I, you know, really grew up with this narrative that I was cute and sweet and little and basically powerless. And so for me, it's like getting to vulnerability using access is really this thing of looking at where that narrative is completely incorrect. And so I'm just so grateful for the tools of access because it's like now with looking at, okay, so if I'm not sugar and spice and everything nice, and if I actually have a level of power and potency that no, I've never seen anywhere, there's no reference point for it, there's no reality for it in this reality, it's like what's actually true then. So for me, it's been like, very destabilizing because everything I thought was true about me was actually a lie but then there's this whole other reality that I have and that I am that has absolutely nothing to do with my past and it's like the past kind of gets erased because you're like oh like that narrative was just my narrative. That's not the way that that I was affecting people around me at all. That's not the way that I was living my life at all. So it's kind of weird. So, you know, well, that's one thing that we definitely learn as children, especially from like a man's perspective or like when you're a little boy, you know, you, you, you read those little children's books about girls being sugar and spice and everything nice. And so, you know, as a, as a boy, or I should say a straight man starts to go through, um, you know, puberty and his hormones are starting to take off. You know, he's, he's, he's raised to believe that girls are sugar and spice and everything nice. And so between having that particular point of view and the hormones raging, a lot of times, uh, you know, straight men will cut off their awareness to when maybe they maybe be taken advantage of from, from a woman or maybe even be in an abusive relationship. And, and people don't talk about men being abused at all. Uh, or men being gaslit in in relationships, and and that is not even in the purpose of this particular conversation. But I know I've certainly cut no, off. It's actually yeah, that's a really great conversation to have because you know it's really twisted, and and women um, oftentimes are the more vicious creature. But if that's not the way it appears in human reality, but I don't mean vicious from a judgment or a wrongness or any of that. 
I mean more warrior minded, more competitive and more intense. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so just when, what I was just saying, just from sometimes from a man's perspective, they'll find themselves in these abusive relationships because they have the point of view that girls are sugar and spice and everything nice. And then when you add the whole hormonal factor and it really cuts off uh, a gentleman's awareness, but. And anyway, genitalia. And genitalia. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh God. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. You walked right into that one. I couldn't. Say, yeah, I couldn't totally. It. <laughs> but talk about the gift of vulnerability. Like why, why would, you know, vulnerability be something that could be a contribution to someone's life? Well, it's like, do you want to know what's actually going on? Or do you want to live with the idea that you have decided every, you know, what's actually going on? And so it's, it's pretty, it's powerful because it's like, if you start to question everything question who you are question your reality and go okay so what have I decided is real and true that's not real and true and what am I capable of that nobody else is capable of can you give some specific examples like what what do you mean by that because like what in access consciousness we talk about vulnerability and that's really the willingness to look at the good and the bad and the ugly of yourself without a point of view and without actually having a judgment and also the good the bad and the ugly of others because no one is all good no one is all perfect okay uh we do have some maybe so certain attributes that are not necessarily generative or creative so so give some specific examples of, of what, what you mean by what you're saying. Well, one of the things they talk about in Access is the difference between the generative bitch and the degenerative bitch. Mm. Say more. So the generative, the generative bitch is, you know, where you're willing to be the bulldozer that you are. You're willing to create a change. You're willing to do what you know is possible and it is generative, you know, it's like, and then the degenerative bitch is when you are not acknowledging maybe how mean, like that your actions could, could be mean and you're not acknowledging what those actions are creating in others. Mm. And so for me, it's like, I didn't think I was a degenerative bitch. I didn't think I was a generative bitch. I was told that I was not a bitch. Mm. I was told that I was so nice and so sweet and so cute 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 and so cute. And, and even when people say something to you, um, you know, that's only like the surface. It's what people think in your direction that you pick up on psychically. And then that's how you create your life or limit your life based on that. So it's like, it's like, you can be cute, but, but does, it's like, who are you actually as a being? And what have you decided you can't be if you're so cute and so nice? Mm. And so, um, you know, there's a, there's a great empowerment that can be when you don't have to cut off the part of you that, that is the bitch and when you realize the bitch that is there it can become generative because it's only degenerative when you're not acknowledging that that's what you're being Mm. can you give like an example of like how being a generative bitch how that could actually create greater in the world yeah that's a really good question i have to actually think that one through for a second i mean being a generative bitch it's like part of that is being a leader. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, if you're cute and you're nice, is that what's required to create a massive change Mm. or is being a bitch, a generative bitch actually required to create a massive change? So it's like, Mm. you know, we have to just show and create everything we've decided a bitch is because it's not Mm. actually a wrongness. Yeah. You know, I would go to Gary and I'd say, oh my God, Gary, I just realized I was totally uh, a bitch in this situation. I was so unkind or I was so unkind and da, da, da. And he's like, and what's judgeable about that? Mm-hmm. What's mm-hmm. wrong with that? Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like, you've got to watch um, The Greatest Showman 10 times and realize that like, 
be you got to be proud of who you are yeah this is me you know that song they have yeah it's like look out because here i come anyway sorry for the yeah singing, but. so so yeah so again this is this is where looking at the good the bad and the ugly of yourself without a point of view can actually and others without a point of view whereas you could actually <clears throat> i don't want to use the word you could see the good in all things but <clears throat> You can see how, if you're willing to look, see the possibility. In yeah, all if you, if you, yeah, if you're willing to see the possibility in all things, then, um, then what you actually have available to you are maybe like certain energies that are appropriate for certain circumstances. So, like for example, like let's say you have a different point of view about certain things that are going on. Let's say in the political world or in the medical world, right? being uh, sugar and spice and everything nice when you know that maybe people are being lied to if you want to be a voice in the world you almost have to have sort of like that bitch energy about you right sure. and so it could come across to like the common person is like wow this lady's a bitch but they're going to listen to you yeah you're going to be heard right and if you're coming from that place of maybe you know basically sharing information with a, po a different point of view that may be against a particular narrative, you're going to have people listen to you. Well, and, and people are so relieved and happy when you match the energy of who you are. Mm. So if you're naturally a bitch and you, you are aware of that mm. and you be that in the world, it doesn't come out with unkindness. It doesn't come out with wrongness. You know, it, it, people are so grateful because you then show them because most of what people are being doesn't match the energy. Like most of what people are doesn't match the energy of who they truly be. Right. Like on the inside. And that's very, very, very difficult to be around. And it's very, very difficult when you're trying to live your life and who you are mm. acting like doesn't match the energy of who you really are. Yeah. That's a dichotomy or like, um, it doesn't, it doesn't work. You can't actually lie to yourself and others that dynamically and have a really, uh, generative, creative, great life that has to actually be congruent in order for your life to expand and grow. So people are so grateful for you when the way that you act matches who you actually are yeah because there's a there's a congruence and people go oh yeah and they can relax because 99 percent of people are trying to pretend that they are something that they know that they're not cool so is there a particular like you've been in access consciousness now for nine years now uh, over nine years could you and they're really you know there aren't any like there's many moments that we have along the journey where like where you feel this sort of like exponential growth in your own awareness really about yourself and you know things come at different times and at different stages and um and again the road of consciousness is not always easy it's not always comfortable and so if you're if you're if you're interested in these tools because you want um sort of uh like motivational inspirational type no. stuff you probably you to, in the wrong place totally you have to but, want this with every single pore of your being in a way that i mean could, it has to be your greatest joy in life because there's no way you'll be able to uh, have that level of change and destabilization yeah because you're gonna see you don't want that, you're gonna see some much. parts about yourself that are like oh ow, wow that that's ugly but, um, yeah. but like, if, if you don't judge it and if you could stay present with it, it actually gives you the opportunity to change it and also see the value in it. Yeah. As well. So can you talk about, I don't want to use the word, the, the defining moment. That's what I was trying to get to. There are no defining moments because we don't I really like want I have a defining moment every six hours. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. <laughs> Cause that means you're always looking at things, which is really, really cool. And actually very unusual for someone your age. I mean, you're 29 years old and you know, most people are just mainly interested in, you know, going to work, getting a paycheck, yeah. making sure they have good health care and uh, a good savings for their retirement in the future. Yeah. But this is something that you're, you actually look on, look on or look at on a regular basis. But talk about like maybe some ahas you've had along the way, in particular, like as of lately, with regards to this whole 
narratives that you bought, like, oh, I'm sugar and spice and everything nice. Therefore, I can get away with being a total asshole. And how that how that could and, and I do, and I did, and I have, and I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how that could actually be a limitation. Um, and and yeah, just just talk about some of your sort of moments of like, whoa, I had n- no idea. Okay, well, um, you don't have to go into total detail, but just you could keep it general. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, it's like. I think that, you know, in a, in a relationship, I think the, the narrative is, could be really backwards sometimes too. I mean, you have, I mean, people are not created equal and there are some people that are more evil than others, but it doesn't mean that the, the people who have more evil are more wrong or more destructive necessarily. So it's like the more, if you have evil and you acknowledge it and be it, it's like you get to be this, this gift in the world. It's not that the the evil is not a wrongness and is not less than. So it's like, for me personally, like, I'll just talk about our marriage and I'll talk about you. You know, it's like, it's like, I, I basically, you know, Gary Douglas says 90% of women hate men and 90% of men hate women. And so it's like, I'm definitely in that 90%. <laughs> and it's like, I, I realized that, you know, being married and in a marriage, it's like you, like for me, there was this grinding, uncontrollable anger and like, hatred that I've had that I had no idea that I had going on towards you just towards men in general and I think I was just born with that like it's just you know I I know that we've had past lifetimes without a doubt I know that I've been around for trillions of years and this is you know another lifetime so I don't really like think about age in the way that most people do and I definitely don't think about death in the way that most people do you know, I could die tomorrow and be like, "Eh, okay, see you later. I'll go do something else. I'll see you soon. You know? And because it's, you know, for me, I, I've just seen, always seen it in a very, in a much longer line and picture, but, but it's like, for me, it's like looking at like asking what's really going on and learning where I wasn't being kind to men and in relationships um and thinking I was and always wondering what's this weird gnawing you know low level anxiety that's going on well it's actually where I wasn't really willing wasn't willing to realize the meanness but then also the potency that the meanness was hiding because there's nothing the meanness isn't really the end result it's like when you look, when you are in allowance of that and you receive that and you look into that, it's like there's this incredible amount of potency that's available. It's sort of like in Acts, as we say, your greatest wrongness is your greatest strongness. Mm. And so it's like, if there is that level of meanness, then what's beyond it? And mm. what's the greatness of that? Mm. So for me, that's really been the gift of all this is like looking vulnerably because sometimes it feels like I'm going to die. Like I'm the worst person in the whole entire world. But then I go a little bit further and there's this incredible glory on the other side of it and this joy and the sense of possibility because the meanness, the wrongness, the evil, and not most people are not willing to go there because they think that's where it, it ends but that's not where it ends. It ends beyond that. And it's like, there's this amazing level of power and potency that's available. So that's what I would have to say about that. And it's, you know, it takes a lot of courage to, to go there because you don't, this is an unpaved territory. This isn't like, you know, elementary school math where it's like, you know, that other people have been through it already. Mm. I don't know anybody who's been through this before. Mm. So I have nothing to lean on, nowhere to look, you know, um it's my own journey and my own thing and I don't it's not even something that I can really talk to people about you know I can talk about it now I've been through it but when you're going through it that's it it's you and you have to just keep going so I think that it's just 
I think it takes an incredible level of, of courage. And I've seen some amazing people do it um, where they are willing to just look at the, what seems like, you know, they'll never be special. They'll never be seen again. Maybe they're totally evil and then go beyond it and then see this greatness of that. Yeah. You know, that all of that was designed to, so that they never got past it and never saw how great they truly were. Yeah. Cool. Actually very well said. One more question and then we'll, we, we can share where people could actually find you and the different exciting classes you have coming up. Um, you, but you said something that, that, that is really a common thing and really in all relationships, whether you're straight, gay, bi, tri, sexual, whatever, all the different definitions they have today, mm -hmm. you kind of see the same common theme in all relationships. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, the projections and expectations that people have when they go into a relationship. And, and, and then, you know, you, you start to actually create separation right from the beginning when you enter in a relationship with all these different points of view. But talk about just a little bit because this is a whole topic in and of itself but just say a little teeny bit more about the disdain the underlying disdain that when you said 90 percent women hate men and 90 percent men hate women can you just talk a little bit briefly about maybe that underlying current um with regards to women's disdain for men, because this isn't just you. I mean, it took no. a lot of vulnerability for you to get to that, to actually, to get that awareness. Years. I mean, it, I've been it, working on this for a fucking decade, you know what I mean? And, and I've run- Yeah, but you are only 29 years old. I mean, there are women in their fifties and sixties that haven't gotten to this no, I know. awareness. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But where do you think that comes from? Like, you didn't just wake up like that no. way. Do you feel like these are points of view that were passed down to you? Is this sort of like a narrative that you see sort of globally? I think it's from, I mean, I mean, I think that, well, I think it's just, just the, the warriors that we are as people that gets twisted. It's mm. like, if you're a warrior, like if your basic personality is to be a warrior, uh, you know, um, a warrior, a soldier, a conqueror, an adventurer, an aggressor, you know, and it's your, you know, you have these incredible abilities, but then it's twisted into you're cute and nice and you should sit at home. Be barefoot with pregnant kids. in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that would create a level of hate and disdain mm. that is uncontrollable and unbelievable. Mm. And then so it's just an incongruency with the person's being and like the life they're living and like the lies that they're telling themselves to like maintain that. But, but, it, but it's also just, I mean, it's like it, Gary just did this part, this telecall called living with a partner who doesn't do access consciousness. And it was so good. And one of the things that he said on there is like, we were talking about this hatred. Gary Douglas, Gary Douglas is the founder of Access Consciousness, for those of you who don't know. But go yeah. ahead. Yep. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he, he basically, we were just, I don't remember. Oh, God, what did he say? But we were talking about how the gift that being in a relationship, the gift that it can be is so beautiful and so great. And it's also one of the darkest, most um, abusive areas of human reality. Um, so it's like, it's like your greatest, this, this greatest wrongness in human reality, this abuse, this subtle disdain for your partner, this uncontrolled, whatever, is your greatest strongness too, because it's like if two people are actually working together and really caring for each other and that hate goes away and the all the underlying stuff it's like that's one of the greatest gifts possible mm -hmm. so it's like it's really the greatest your greatest wrongness is your greatest strongness and like so yeah so much is available and it just takes you know i use the access consciousness clearing statement like crazy um i listen to it all night long while i sleep and I listen to it during the day and I run clearings during the day and I do classes with the clearing statement. So for me, the clearing statement 
has been a huge gift in all of this and the access bars. I really couldn't have done it without those two things. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know, the, the Access Consciousness Clearance Statement can be found on www.theclearingstatement.com. And it's kind of this weird, wild, wacky <laughs> set of words strung together to basically um, undo um, all those areas in one's life where there's unconsciousness and anti-consciousness that hold things in place um, that keep you from actually getting past it or going beyond it or creating the awareness that's um, required to actually change that particular limitation. And it could be in the areas of money, relationships, the points of view you have about your body, sexuality, healing, sadness, joy. And God knows that's a touchy subject because my first wife committed suicide. You know, she was diagnosed with um, bipolar disorder uh, back when she was a teenager and, and she, she lost that battle. And so for me, knowing the power of these tools and what they can create for someone, as does Julia as well, there's so many different resources available in access consciousness, even helping people with abuse. And the clearing statement is just one of hundreds of different resources available in access consciousness. And access bars is like the first place you start, which is this wonderful hands-on modality where we touch these 32 points on your head. So to get more information about that stuff, you can go to www.accessconsciousness.com and check out all the different things that Julie and I are talking about. Julia, how can people find, find you, your classes, um, and all the different things that you're actually creating in the world? In fact, I kind of noticed like, uh, you have a sex call coming up, a two-day sex call coming up. I kind of just sort of like just glance we live we're married and i have no idea the class actually is... was a facebook memory from a year ago but oh, we to do it yeah there you go <laughs> there you go yeah the sex that is possible so there's a lot of different things that that you're creating and all of these different facilitators around the world are, facil are facilitating and it's such a gift so where can people find you How yeah so my website is is juliasotis.com and j-u-l-i-a-s-o-t-a-s.com and uh, I have Instagram and Facebook and SoundCloud nice. and YouTube and all the so people can stalk you that way. Tubes and tubes and grams <laughs> and Facebooks and books and whatever. Nice. And I could be found at www.dranthonymattis.com. And uh, you could see the different classes and th different things that, that I'm doing as well. And uh, yeah, so, you know, if you're interested in something wild, wacky, and weird that actually works, <laughs> check out Access Consciousness and don't believe any of the shit you see on the internet because it's all designed to actually keep you from knowing what you know and empowering you to actually have more of you and to bring out those capacities. So, you know, unfortunately, what we do is no, not not unfortunately, what we do is very weird, very different. But man, my life has been a hell of a lot happier than it's ever been. I know your life has been a lot happier than it's ever been. And my children's lives have been a lot happier than they've ever been. And it's all because of the tools of access consciousness. So if that's something that sounds at least of interest to you, check out our website our websites and the access consciousness website. And uh, yeah, see what pops for you and go for it. All right, take care. Hope to see you all in person someday soon. Thanks, Julia, for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Anthony.